this is the CentOS automotive SIG, so I'm going to give a fairly high-level overview of what we do because we're only about one or two years old, and um, there'll be some Q&A at the end if you want to dig into any area a bit deeper. Um, so, yeah, I'm Eric Curtin. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I, I work in the automotive org. Um, so here are the automotive SIG community contacts. Um, Jeffrey, Jeffro, I call him, um, is our acting chair. Um, Pierre, Pierre Yves Chabon is our technical lead. He's actually at the back there. Um, and Ian McLeod is our architect, architect um, for the automotive organization. Um, we actually have a decent presence at FOSTEM, so if, if you're interested in automotive stuff, I recommend quizzing up a few of these guys because everyone's working on different um, interesting things. We have we have Peter, who's, who's also in the room, Egal. Egal's the guy over there. Um, we have Michael Ho, Alexander Larson, and apparently Michael Ho is a clone. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm here as well, so I'm, I'm always free to take questions. Um, so what does the automotive SIG do? The, the purpose of the automotive SIG is to support and contribute to open development of software targeted at in-vehicle use cases. Um, we create automotive-related open source software. We incorporate um, upstream automotive-related products into our automotive distribution, which I'm going to talk about in a while. Um, and we build a CentOS stream variant for automotive. Um, so the, the automotive SIG produces three kinds of artifacts. So the automotive stream distribution, which sometimes we call AutoSD for short, um, the automotive SIG repositories, and we produce some sample images for you to play around with and develop on. Um, so yeah, just to describe what the automotive stream distribution is, so it's it's an upstream repository to the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system, which sometimes you'll hear people call Rivas for short, um, much like CentOS Stream is to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, so just to like glue this into people's heads, if everyone can repeat after me, AutoSD is to Rivas what CentOS Stream is to Rel. So. Okay, cool, perfect. You have it, you got it. Um, oh yeah, and our official names are the longer versions, um, just, just to get that right. Um, so we have a very similar workflow to RHEL. So in RHEL, the various SIGs um, contribute to CentOS Stream, and uh, that eventually becomes, or it propagates to RHEL. Um, so in the automotive org, um, we're very similar, but different. Um, <laughs> so the CentOS automotive SIG um, contributes to automotive stream distribution, and that all gets propagated. Well, all, I shouldn't say that. Um, that gets propagated to Red Hat in vehicle OS. Um, so we've, we've two kinds of repositories at present. Uh, this could be subject to change, but this is the way things are as of now. Um, we have an automotive repository and an AutoSD repository. Um, my simple way of explaining this is automotive repo, it's kind of like rail, so it's community supported, and AutoSD in comparison does get propagated to Rivas. So it wouldn't be impossible that like an automotive package does get into Rivas, but it's, it's more like an EPEL equivalent. Um, like some of the packages are experiments and stuff we're doing, so. Um, so yeah, this is just a link um, to where we have some sample images. Um, so there's some images you can install on hardware. There's images you can use with emulators. We have x86-based images. We have ARM-based images, um, OS3 images, non-OS3 images. There's, there's a lot of images you can play around with. Um, I went through all that already. Okay. Oh yeah, just 
just so I, I briefly referenced earlier how um, uh, the artifacts are separate to the normal rel workflow, and you're probably curious. Well, if it's rel, if it's like rel, why not just use CentOS Stream and rel? So there are a couple of differences between us and and CentOS Stream. Um, some of the differences here are the kernel. So our kernel is like a, it's a real time kernel rather than the standard um, preempt dynamic configured kernel. Um, sometimes you'll see some extra ARM enablement there. Um, we strip some kernel modules, but um, for the most part, it's it's like 99% the, the real kernel, um, which we kind of we kind of rely on the st stability of like um, CentOS Stream and Rail. Um, functional safety, for example, because it's it's a proven robust um, operating system. So we also put a huge amount of resources into making sure whatever is required goes through ISO 26262 certification, which is a functional safety certification. Um, we have some automotive specific packages as well. That's another different, some other ones. Um, I just want to take a moment to explain the difference between um, the real-time kernel and the normal everyday kernel that you guys are probably running there. Um, so the the normal, most commonly used kernel, um, preempt dynamic, that provides a, a throughput-oriented scheduler in the kernel. Um, the difference between the real-time one is that the real-time scheduler, it's, it's more focused on low latency, consistent response time, and determinism. Um, so a simple kind of automotive analogy would be like when you hit the brakes in your car, uh, number two is more desirable than number one. Um, I don't know about you guys, but if if I hit the brakes in my car, I kind of like them to react consistently. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's the advantage. Um, Oh yeah, I just want to say one of the neat things about Rivas based images is, um, sorry, apologies to the marketing folks. One of the neat things about Red Hat in vehicle operating system based images, um, from a user space perspective, it, it looks pretty much the same as RHEL 9 or CentOS Stream 9. That's that's pretty advantageous because if, if you build a package for any of the distributions in the CentOS Stream family, um, it's it, it should just work. Um, so, for example, if you can imagine a fleet of vehicles connected to like uh, a rel based cloud backend, um, the same packages should like just run fine on both. Um, so that's one of the things I find kind of neat. Um, So yeah, looking forward, um, one of the things that came out of our automotive work is ComposeFS. So that's a, a new file system. Um, Alexander Larson's actually doing a talk on that. If if you want to attend, that's it's pretty interesting. Um, our automotive container team is working on some frameworks for container orchestration in vehicles. Um, and so that's kind of cool. Um, some of those guys are here, so. Um, take advantage of quizzing them up. Um, we're going to be doing more ARM enablement on automotive boards. Um, ARM boards are, and I, I put a star there because ARM boards are definitely kind of our, our focus because that dominates the automotive ecosystem. But we do keep an eye on other CPU architectures like Risk Five and and X86. Um, and we actually we actually build images for X86 as well. So. <laughs> If um, if you just want to develop code on your local x86 laptop, um, that's kind of useful. Um, and yeah, watch out um, for more announcements from our various partnerships. Um, and there's there's plenty of previous announcements from partners like Qualcomm and GM. If um, if you Google them, I'm sure you'll find them. Um, and that's it. I've have, I've have a few links there of our. Our matrix, that's a useful resource if, if you ever have questions. Um, Jeffro and Pierre as well, they host this monthly um, community meeting. Um, that's quite, um, 
that's that's a good opportunity to ask um, questions face to face if you ever feel like attending that. Um, that's kind of it. Are there any questions? Nope. Oh, sorry. Just uh, curious, uh, which vendors are uh, eventually trying to implement Red Hat in their cars? Um, or can't you say any names <laughs> yet? <laughs> no, I, I'm not allowed to talk about everyone, but um, uh, GM, we announced GM. We work closely with GM. And we work with Qualcomm as well, because they produce uh, quite a few um, automotive boards. But um, I'm not allowed to talk about, <laughs> about any of the others. Yeah. But no, the, um, in six months' time, I don't know, maybe you Google Red Hat in vehicle <laughs> operating system and there might be more announcements. There might not be. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Yep. Uh, do you have a lot of engagement from the open source community? Are people testing it, filing bugs, stuff like that? Um. Yeah, yeah, what's, what are we using for a book? Do you know what our book tracker is, Peter? No. We do have engagement from the, the community. If you look at our GitLab um, links, um, I won't mention any specific names, but if you look at the pull requests and stuff, you'll see, um, yeah, we, we have plenty of engagement um, from the community. Um, everything's open source, so, um, yeah, I'm not going to pick out anyone in particular, but we also have partnerships with various um, organizations like Eclipse SDV is one of them and Sophie is another. I just didn't list them here because I'm not confident on our official status of all those. But that monthly call, Pierre at the back and Jeff Rowe run every month, I would suggest tuning into that because they always... Mm -hmm. That's that's one part Jeffro almost always announces the status of our partnerships with the various communities. So who's the target audience for the open source parts? Is it somebody hacking their own open source software for their car or is it some other companies that no. we're working for? Yeah, no, this isn't kind of like um my Ford Fiesta is outside, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stick in a USB stick and <laughs> no, it's, it's not like that. Um so, so automotive companies they'll 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 play around with our mm -hmm. our operating system on a VM. I can I can show you what that looks like right now if you'd like. Um, and yeah, and they contact us if they're interested, like GM have done, for example. So the open source part is basically like an ad, like try this, and you know maybe you'll like drive us. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's every, everything's open, um, and that's even a lot of the existing solutions out there. Like, say, um, a lot of infotainment units are already Linux based, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of companies out there using building their own Yocto Linux based um, distributions for automotive already. Um, so, Linux in a car isn't a new thing in itself. Mm -hmm. um, it's just um, if you would like. If you would like to use a rel like distribution in your car, I guess Rivas is the product for you. Thank you. I do have one in the chat that I'm going to have to run back and read? Yep. OK. Um, uh, what's the kind of update scheduling and update delivering to the vehicles? Is it like? Um one and done, like installed uh, when the car is produced and then never updated again? Or is it like, how is it like? Yeah, so we're aiming for like 15 years plus support or whatever. Our update mechanism, uh, we, did, we did a couple of talks earlier that referred to, to OS3. That's right. like our recommended um, update mechanism. So yeah, an update would normally be delivered via OS3. OS3 would do the new deploy. And on the next reboot, um, you should be in the new version of the software. So that's kind of how. So are the updates like delivered all over the air, or are the cars sent to like, uh, well, the centers for them to be installed manually by the folks who are in charge of it? Yeah, it's 
it's, I'll be honest, it's actually a bit of both. Um, summer over the year. Um, yeah, it depends on the OEM. Um, <laughs> it depends on what components. Like, if it's just the general Linux user space, yeah, that's probably going to be OS3. Yeah. But if, if it's an underlying firmware or something, it, it depends, to be honest. There's no... Yeah, yeah. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's that's a good point the gal just said. So, like, we will download all the new binaries and whatever, but, like, it's a t it's an atomic switch. It's not going to update while you're driving. It's it's <laughs> it's on next boot you'll be in the new version of the software <laughs> no. yeah so, so that would be fun but no. <laughs> i have i have a bonus slide as well if you if you want to see what it looks like um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Suggest that on yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna run a VM just to show you what it looks like. Um, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to um, feel free to put up your hand and ask. Uh -huh. Oh, run VM is is um it's just a Python script we have in in one of our Git repos um. It's basically so you don't have to do chemo dash system dash a, a million command line options. So it's, it's just a wrapper for chemo. Um, it's pretty good though. Um, so yeah, that's it booting. You see CentOS Auto SD. Um, so yeah, <coughs> images, isn't it? So I wrote this very simple container file. Um, it's like, run breaks. <laughs> 21 hours ago yeah so i didn't i didn't i don't have any complex automotive application here because i was worried about time and all that um but yeah that container was basically cause application which i'm sure you've seen before saying welcome to guest fedora container running on automotive stream distribution host so as you can see, it's it's very real like you can do your DNF installs, RPM, OS3 install, whatever you like. Um, so yeah, there's a we have question. uh, two questions out of chat first. Um, first is how is the automotive kernel built? Is it strictly part of AutoSD, or is there also a community automotive kernel? And if the latter, how do you deal with signing? Yes, that's. Yeah, the signing part, the signing part is tricky. We haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, although we have plenty of ideas for it. Um, where did we build it? We just built it on CBS, but it is its own separate package. I think it's called Kernel Automotive. Yeah, yeah. So we we built it. We built it on CBS, just like just where everything else is built. The other question about the signing. That's something we haven't quite figured out, but. If if any of you follow like the the new UAPI group is called, it's like the Leonard Pottering group, where they they're working on stuff like unified kernels and that kind of stuff, and they have a signing mechanism for that. So I, I would recommend reading that documentation because that's kind of the direction we're going in general. Um, also, I referred to Alexander Larson's Compose FS talk. Um, that's all linked as well, because I think that's like the final point in our chain of trust the, um, the actual file system. So, 
yet. And then uh, do you have any bridge with AGL? I, I'm assuming automotive grade Linux. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what our status is on that. I, I know Jeffro, who's our, our chair, he's talked about that before. He's, he's on their mailing list and he tracks their stuff, but I'm not sure we have an official relationship with him. Maybe Pierre can answer there, actually. Um, so with regard to AGL, we don't really have a, we're, we're cousins in the same way that uh, Debian's and, and, you know, the Rail family are cousins. Uh, we're, we're targeting different, uh, different parts of the community. AGL is meant to, pr to give you all the tools you need to build your own Linux to run in the car. Uh, AutoSD and the Invicule OS from Red Hat are meant to provide us a, a functional safety certified product that you can take off the shelf and run with. So we don't ex we don't exactly address the same segments, so we, we don't compete on the same things. Uh, we're just two open source projects working in the same industry or the same uh, ecosystem. Yeah, I, Pierre answered that perfectly. So. Is there any plans in the future or currently to run like something graphical, like Wayland or X to show a GPS or something, or running Spotify on a screen in front of the car, like Tesla's, like some info center thing. I've got. It's, is it possible to turn up the volume on the mic? Oh, uh, I didn't I think the, the big problem is the mics are all facing us and we all hear it fine and you don't. Um, Oh, you eyes. Um, yeah, I was thinking, is there any plans to have a graphical like, UI to show like in the front center of the car to like Wayland or something for like uh, showing a GPS graphically or running Spotify or like an info center car yeah, uh, that's, screen in front? That's, that's a good question. Um, so yeah i don't we have a we have an internal kind of infotainment team that that look at that stuff um i was just asking on the matrix on that but the other thing that we're looking into say if um say if you had your own um infotainment platform um you have the option of virtualizing that platform um on top of AutoSD or running it in a container or sandbox of some sort. So, so we support that, say if certain car manufacturer really likes this infotainment platform and they say, look, we're, we're gonna virtualize it on um, AutoSD. Um, so AutoSD doesn't have to worry about it so much. Um, yeah, we're, we're open to that kind of thing as well. So there's, there's options there. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, Eric. That was great. Thanks, Dave.